Ford, Air, Phoenix, Hinterland, Hopkinson Mining, um, you know, nine of us who basically represent 90% of the domestic operators and we actually uh, own and operate 43 aircraft amongst ourselves and have about, uh, let's say, over 1,500 staff collectively. Uh, we got together and uh, formed the National Air Transport <coughs> Association. Now, what is our mandate? Our mandate, as I said earlier, is broad-based representation. We see among the, um, our immediate objectives to basically have advocacy for the sector to identify what are our emerging priorities, and most importantly, to work with the entire industry. I'll ask uh, the other members to talk about that a little bit, but also to look at working very close with our regulatory authorities, again, the Civil Aviation Authority, our Minister of Aviation, and the government in a real collaborative manner, a broad-based and collab collaborative manner. So looking ahead for me, uh, with having the, the second generation of leaders next to us, Bobby, it's a very exciting time. Aviation has certainly come a long way, and with this national representation, it will certainly go much, much further. Interesting indeed. Um, Captain Charles, you represent a certain sector of the industry. Um, what are your expectations? And by the way, which sector do you come from? in terms of the business side of things out at the airport? Well, let me just uh, back up a little where I started aviation. Um, I Since I was five years, I had a desire to fly. And um, until 2001, where I began my flying career, initially trained in Trinidad, and then I commenced my flying career with your service in 2001. So for over almost 15 years, I've been flying in Guyana, everywhere, over the jungles, a um, few times on Medivax and so forth. So um, bear that in mind, I, since I was growing up, I knew that aviation for me, I had want to take it into a further depth rather than just being a pilot. So that was my initial stage to fly, and further after that was to start my own business somewhere or the other. And you did? I did. I founded uh, Flights of Hope, where I first bought a... Um, uh, small Cessna, and that was basically for our mission programs and uh, humanitarian. And later on, I got opportunity to um, start the domestic airways, which is um, was granted the air um, operator certificate last year. And I subsequently um, in the management of Phoenix Airways also currently. So you 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 considered a small operator then at at, at the at the airport. You will consider yourself a small operator. More or less, yes. But I'll come back to you on the NATA situation. Let me get back. Let me get to my left now. And, and Brioni, um, <clears throat> accountable manager at JAGS Aviation. And some people might say, what is the accountable manager? We know accounts manager, <laughs> but it's the accountable manager. But what is also interesting, and maybe you could tell me how you feel about this. And, and check this out, Annette. The minister responsible for aviation is female. The acting ge director general at at the uh, Civil Aviation Authority is female. The president of NATA is female, and I guess you're a pilot too. I used to be in a previous previous <laughs> life. <laughs> Once a pilot, always a pilot. <laughs> and now we got Brioni, a comfortable manager, and the treasurer at NATA. How how does it feel to know that um, as a woman you're among this illustrious group? of people empowering <laughs> controlling the aviation industry well it's not controlling but um playing an integral part it's, it's very empowering and i'm happy to be part of nata jags aviation is happy to be part of nata because um even though i may be older than jerry jr i am still i think i am still one of the youngest player at, J at oval international airport one of the youngest um aircraft owners there so my level of knowledge is not as versed as Jerry or Orlando or Miss Annette. But being part of NATO now, I'm open to all of that. I have a, I have, um, a network that I can go to and receive as much information as I need, address issues that I have and so forth. So therefore, you know, the objectives of NATO is what was interesting to Jax to be part of it. We were happy to be on board. With the organize with the association, Jerry, 
As a young pilot, what would you bring to NATA, or what do you think NATA could do for you? Well, I think the second question is more applicable: is what can NATA do for me? And being a young pilot in Guyana, um, flying through the Guyana, Orlando will also touch on this: is that the pilots have a lot to say. They have a lot of intimate knowledge in the industry, and they are very well educated and well spoken people. What they lacked was an outlet a way for them to channel their, their voices and come together as one. And I think NATA, that is the biggest um, benefit that NATA is going to give to us pilots. Not just young pilots, but the experienced ones. I mean, um, when you get a chance to fly with people like Captain Alvin Clark, I mean, you know, he is one of the people who trained me, and I was lucky enough to be part of his, um, part of his uh, what is it, tutelage? Uh, is the right word? Um, and what <clears throat> NATA will do is that they will bring the experience and then the energy of the young, mm -hmm. and they will put that together. So, you know, we don't only get to talk about it maybe over a beer on a Friday night or while we're flying, but we can actually come together as pilots and talk about important issues. For example, safety, uh, for example, um, maintenance of the interline airstrips, you know, VHF communication throughout Guyana. Mm -hmm. These are some of the main topics that I'm sure these pilots are talking about all day, every day. And NATA gives them an opportunity now to come together and speak with one voice. Captain Charles, you fly the jungles of Guyana almost on a daily basis. You've been a pilot for more than 15 years. What are some of the challenges that you think, as a business owner, because you, hold, you wear two hats, as a business owner and as a pilot, what do you think NATO would do for you in both capacities, as a business owner and as a pilot? Um, it's, it's been the first time, actually, since I have um, involved deeply into aviation, whether as being a pilot or an operator. I felt so connected to other um, aviators. Um, never before that we we were all pilots together, we were all subsequently operators. And for some time you felt this this, this competitiveness between operators and this, this um, distance between us, you know? But after the formation of NATO, basically, for the nine of us, the nine operators, we felt like a family, that there are so many things that we have been able to communicate and um, transit amongst ourselves that never happened before. And um, certainly that's what it, it NATO brings to us. It brings that unity, that, that collectiveness, that, that um, you know, sharing together what you might experience and um, so I'm very comfortable with, with, with that so far and uh, I, I could sense it has a good foundation and we are definitely going to move forward. And it, not uh, obvious has a vision, <coughs> excuse me, and you spoke about the objectives, but what is the ultimate vision from the perspective of your membership that you will try to encourage? Because this will not be only open to pilots and operators. You've got ground handlers, you've got baggage handlers, you've got fuelers, you've got everybody in the sector. What, what is the total vision in terms, is it, is it gonna be, and some people may wonder, is NATO gonna be a union? Are you gonna approach government for funding? What, what, what do you plan to do? Well, we actually plan to do some of that in terms of uh, approaching government and working with government and, and liaising with government and the priorities, for example, the hinterland strips that um, are badly in need of, 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 of um, upgrade and maintenance. So in terms of the vision of NATA, the vision of NATA is broad-based representation of the pilot body, the engineering body, the, the flight dispatches, the flight attendants, for the first time, and this is why I said earlier, I'm very excited about mm. seeing a light out here ahead of us. For the first time, these associate bodies will have equal opportunities for growth collaboratively together. For example, I was um, really, really overwhelmed by the response I got. I did a post um, about two days after we launched on um, Guyanese Pilots, which is the, the, the main um, social media outlet for um, Guyanese aviation, uh, uh, you know, members. And I did a post basically saying that, you know, I know that a lot of um, expertise in the diaspora exists, aviation lawyers, um, air, airport operators, you know, um, medical aviation fraternity and whatever. And I said, look, I would love to have 
a diaspora association being a part of the National Air Transport Association. And boy, oh boy, was I absolutely, totally blown over by the response to that post. You know, and then, for example, um, a former air traffic controller who's now in, in the Turks and Caicos, who has his own aviation.org um, portal as well. Next day, you know, uh, I would like to help you guys develop your website, your 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 social media uh, strategy. He wants to also have uh, that input with us. You know, even though he was a former air traffic controller, he's now also in um, in airport management. So. What is exciting for us, apart from the local expertise in country, and, and Jar, as you spoke about it, the older pilots and, and, and the mentoring that will go. Um, Brian, I've, I've interacted with you over the past couple of weeks. I'm super impressed by your professionalism, even though, as you say, you're, you're newing the, in the aviation mm -hmm. field. Aviation. I mean, you're, you're such an amazing young leader, you know. So, for example, we'll be able to tap into the diaspora expertise. We have a document that needs to be peer reviewed. We have only maybe limited expertise locally. Bam! With a touch of button, it goes out to all the legal and other professionals to get peer reviewed. When we when we're looking at standards and and and, and what have you, you know, you, you tap into that diaspora um, expertise. So in terms of, of 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 the goal and the vision is to bring together this entire pool of Guyanese aviation expertise with us working towards a common goal. Right, so the timing, like I said, could not have been more right. And Jerry touched on the on the on the communications aspect of the of the hinterland, and I'd like you to elaborate a bit more on that. How do we push that forward and prioritize well, that? Well, that, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> what I are some? Of, you. <laughs> <laughs> what was some of the? What are some of the, the 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 urgently needed areas to be developed as far as the aviation industry is concerned in Guyana? Because, like I said, the conference a number of things came out of the conference. Um, Ogle Airport is rapidly developing, we know. Um, there's some dialogue going on there, but that's going to be settled very shortly. But in general, the whole aspect of needs from a pilot's perspective, what are some of the areas you think NATO could now step in and ensure that, that happens? If we start with safety, for example. Right. So, I mean, before I even get into that, the fantastic part about NATO is that as we're growing, it's not going to be Jerry Gavaya, what do you think? Or Orlando Charles, what do you think? It's going to be the entire pilot body. And this is why I think, you know, those of you who are watching, really pay attention and say, if you're an engineer, if you're a flight dispatcher, if you're a pilot, if you're involved in aviation in any way, get involved with NATA because this is how you can come in and we can actually start talking about it. But off the top of my head, uh, in terms of safety, communication is the number one thing. When you get outside of about, you know, 75 to 100 miles out of Tamari, you're not talking to an ATC controller. Right? The pilots now have to go, and, and Orlando will tell you this, once you start getting into the Rupununi, you're on your own. Right? And as a pilot, when the weather is bad, or if I'm doing a medevac, for example, I'm on my own in the night with the weather is bad. And I'm going into a runway with, I have maybe two, two or three people in a, in, a, in a car lighting the runway. These are some of the things that need to be addressed, at least from my perspective. I'm very interested to hear what some of the other pilots may have to say, um, but communication, getting the VHF um, repeaters out there, lighting of the runways at night, especially the big hubs like Madia. I mean, Madia is a huge hub, especially with the township um, right there. Port Kaituma is another one. Um, you know, maintenance of the strips. There's some runways out there, and Orlando goes into some of these tiny runways, and they're scary. When you when you look at some of the videos of the pilots going in there, it takes extreme skill. So, so, so it would be right to say that at this point, and and Orlando, you could chip in. At this point, it is important that some levels of dialogue be done with government now, because yes. we could move to the next level, because individually you will not have been able to engage government, but now as a collective body, it will be easier, and you could bring awareness exactly. to, 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 to the powers that be, so to speak, of what are some of the necessities. For example, you spoke about going into small airstrips. I know there are issues with animals running across mm -hmm. um, airstrips, but especially for the medivac and bringing people out at night mm -hmm. uh, to get medical help. Um, we could look at things like, you know, having um, solar-powered lights yeah, on runways, absolutely. things of that kind of nature. But, 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 uh, Captain Charles, um, for your company, and I know you have other partners, um, if we establish you as a small business out in the airport area, 
What do you expect from NATO? What do you expect out of this organization? Well, um, it's uh, uh, there's more impact. We are a group. Um, you know, there, there's more force where numbers come together rather than individual effort. And um, we would all have um, this issue time after time, whether it be it um, runway conditions and, and different scenarios that we would lobby for, for the government to make an input into. And um, if, we could, if we are to do that, the individual is not going to be so effective than if we are together as a group, which we are currently. Um, it speaks of all of us, um, all our interests and all our areas of um, concern. Um, if I'm to touch a little also on one of the questions you had asked me earlier regarding my, the challenges of um, in the hinterland regarding flying, um, there is one that I would like to talk about a little, um, <clears throat> which is definitely um, a major concern. The, the, the small airports and most of the, the airports in the hinterland, they're very short and narrow. And um, these are this is areas that we are certainly, as NADA, would lobby um, the authorities and more so the government to look into. Um, instead of, of using the funds that might be available on an annual budget for airports, be spread out to a number of small airports to upgrade them, improve them rather than... You know, so we could reach, we could reach people yeah. Yeah. In, 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 all, all over the place. That's right. And you know, when you get into the nitty-gritty of the conversation, of course, time does run into you. And, <laughs> and, and there we are. So, but Annette, let me give you the opportunity to wrap up and, and, and tell our viewers um, how you feel about NATA and, and, and its direction and where do you think you would wind up? All right, so I am, like I said earlier at the beginning, it's nine of us, you know, Wings, Air Services, Roraima, Jags, Phoenix, Domestic, Hopkinson Mine, and Hinterland. And with the nine members that, as I said, represent 90% of the domestic sector, it's really exciting for us to be collaborating and moving ahead in terms of prioritizing what um, the aviation uh, needs are. To touch on the earlier comment about Orlando with the Hinterland airships and the, the need to maintain and, and make them secure, what we've also done is to be feeding our Minister of Aviation photographs of these airships in real time. That has never been done before. So you don't have to be going out there and taking a lot of time to look at the condition of the strips. Our minister will be getting that in real time from our pilots. You know, our pilots will represent us on that hinterland airstrip um, committee to prioritize the, 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 the uh, airstrips in terms of which should needs the most urgent attention. So generally, we're looking at broad-based representation. The licensed aviation professionals by the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority will be full members, and the unlicensed avi aviation um, uh, stakeholders will become associate members. So this is the first, I hope, of many conversations. And, and, there are many me, more of us. Let me, let, me, let me break you or bust you <laughs> off quickly by saying our members in the diaspora, for example, who are Guyanese, who are into aviation, are they entitled to become members? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is why I spoke earlier about the Diaspora Association that's going to bring tremendous international and regional expertise. So it's exciting times ahead. Here we are, the first National Air Transport Association collaborating with even, even our Guyanese professionals in the Caribbean and internationally. So watch watch out what's happening next. Definitely. Aviation Lots of things are happening in aviation. The sky is not the limit. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue. We would like to thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope you enjoy this program. Obvious, there's much and many more to come. We have many other operators and professionals in the sector. And from time to time, the National Air Transportation a National Air Transport Association will be on the move and we will bring you more updates as we progress. I'm Bobby Vera. Thank you so much to the panel and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.